Kale, before getting to your goal, I just wanted to ask you about uh, Eric Johnson scoring a couple goals today. Just uh, what were your thoughts on his game and seeing him pitching offensively like that? Oh, it's awesome. Obviously, um, everybody, everybody in the league and everybody knows that uh, he's capable of producing um, and helping us on both ends of the ice. So tonight um, we wanted to, after the beginning of the game, we wanted to focus on getting pucks to the net and um, he was just getting them through and um, credit to him. He was, he was just putting them on net and um, I, I didn't have great angles on them. I got to go watch the replay, but the, the first one seemed like a snipe. So um, yeah, no, the boys obviously love it. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Kale, you usually don't celebrate too much after your goals, but you were pretty excited after after that one. Just take me through the rush of emotion in a situation like that and what you're feeling. Yeah, no, for me, it was just um, – it was a little bit lucky, to be honest. Their, uh, their D or whoever the guy was on me was kind of overcommitting for uh, for a cycle up top, and um, I just decided that I'd try and take it to the net, and um, we had a good – um like decoy in the back that I was that kind of my first option to pass to and then once I took that away I just 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 tried to put it in short side and I um, was able to get it over flurry but um yeah no obviously excited just to get the win um giving it up in the third there not ideal but at the same time um especially on the back end we stuck with it and um we just kept grinding and I think it showed back to Eric Dean Mile High Sports so after the initial move on Kirby Dot, you obviously didn't have much time to, you know, basically decide how are you how you were going to take the shot. Just how much time do you really have to think in that moment to obviously go forehand, backhand the way you did? But just, you know, is that something you think about or is that something that just kind of happens? Yeah, I, I feel like it just you're in the moment um, just kind of happens. But um, no, like I said, I think my original plan was to kind of pass it and then um, when they gave me a little bit of space, I tried to tried to take it uh, to the back back side, and Flurry was so far out, um, I, I wasn't able to do that. So I just decided to to cut uh, kind of short side and um, just spur of the moment thing. You're not really thinking <laughs> too many steps; it's just you're in the moment. Last one here for Kale Peter Bob, the Athletic. Uh, do you prefer that goal or the goal you scored against Philly this year, the the coast to coast one? Which one do you is your favorite? Um, I mean. Uh, both games we got wins. So um, in my mind, they're, they're both pretty equal. All right. Thank you, Kale. Thanks. We'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman, Eric Johnson, Peter Ball, the athletic. Yeah, Eric, um, I guess, what was your angle on, on Kale's goal in overtime and just take me through what you saw? Yeah, I was sick. Um, I, to answer your question, I preferred tonight's goal. I thought that was <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, just what he did, it's, he's, so, he's pretty modest and humble, but that was, you know, in my mind, one of the best goals of the year. So that was pretty sweet to watch from the bench, just his edge work and just the way he finished. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Eric, a couple questions for you. Firstly, obviously pitching in offensively, scoring two goals, just, uh, you know, how do you feel after getting a couple goals like that? And, and number two, uh, did that Kel McCarr goal overshadow the fact that you had two goals for the first time and you know, God knows how long it's been. Well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy it, it did because we won. Um, so, you know, the two goals are meaningless unless he doesn't uh, put that in at the end. So for sure, I'm glad it overshadowed it. Um, and uh, as far as the two, just the first one, just a nice, uh, nice delay pass from Nas. And I just took some space and tried to pick my corner. And there's a great screen uh, by a couple of our guys in front and just found its way in. Um, Second one, just try to get it to the net, got lucky, got a deflection up there, D, um, just tried to join the rush. I mean, don't uh, don't put the puck in the back of that as much as I used to, but anytime you can contribute and, and help the team um, get a victory like tonight, where we played so, so good in the first and pretty average in the second, not very good in the third, but found a way to get it done. Um, so all in all, uh, we'll take it. Kyle Fredrickson, Denver Post. Nathan McKinnon extended his point streak tonight to 11 games. Just what, what's really resonated about the way he's played uh, to you ever since he's been back healthy? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's finding ways to produce. Uh, I'm sure he would like the puck to go in the net a little bit more, but, um, you know, the way he's producing for us and um, setting other guys up is, uh, I think, another element of his game that is, is still growing and getting better. And um, it's just a matter of time before the puck finds the back of the net for him, but he's doing so many other things for us. I mean, you saw that back check that he had at the end of the end of the, um, uh, the third and made a great play and uh, he's just doing everything for us. So, um, you know, whether he's dishing assists and um, playing good defensively, he's playing 24, 25 a night as a forward, that's a lot of ice time. It's a lot of skating and um, he's uh, doing everything for us. 
I'll take two more here for Eric. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. I think going back to Kale, I think he's up to, uh, I think, 14 goals. And uh, you guys have played around 30 games. What do you think his, uh, I guess, potential is to maybe be one of the first guys in a long time to crack that 30 goal barrier this year? Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that can do it for sure. Um, if you just look what he did on that goal and what you've seen, you know, throughout the season and um, just the evolution of his game, it's, he's only going to keep getting better too, which is the scary part. So um, if he keeps going at this rate, for sure, he'll get there. He might even get higher, but um, he's such an even keel guy. He takes it a game at a time, a shift at a time. He's so uh, modest and and level headed and even keel that he doesn't, doesn't get high or low. He's just right down, right down the middle. And I think that's just what makes him so good. He's, he's an unflappable guy and um, so humble. And, um, you know, we all saw how special that goal was, but he, you know, he's as modest as ever and doesn't make a big deal out of it. And just a pleasure to be around. And last one here, Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Is there anything to, uh, you know, playing with guys like Kale and Devon Taves, even Sam Gerard, these guys that are just scoring a lot more goals from the blue line, is there anything to being able to learn from them, even though you've been around for a heck of a lot longer, or does that change your game at all, being able to play with guys that just shoot the puck that much and score that much? Great question. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm learning from these guys probably more than they've ever learned from me. Every day, I'd, I feel like I'm kind of picking things up um, that they're doing. And, um, you know, the game gets faster and more skilled uh, every year. And um, if you're not trying to, to get better, you're getting worse. So um, as young as these guys are, and um, even though they don't have a ton of experience, I'm picking things up and watching them and um, doing the best to add to my game what I can. And um, even if it's just a little thing here and there, I think it makes a difference. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely trying to watch things that they do and things they do with the puck and their reads. Um, it's, it's fun to watch and it's definitely helpful for me too. All right. Thank you, Eric. All right. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach, Jared Bednar, Peter Baugh, the athletic. Hey Jared, um, to start, I guess, just what were, what did you see on Kale's goal in overtime in your initial, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you see a play like that? A relief. That's what came to my mind. I, I mean, great play. Patience with the puck, strength on the puck behind the net, um, some deception in in the play as well as he's climbing. Um, comes around the net, he's climbing, he's looking at guys, seeing what options are available, and then he uses his skill and skating ability to cut underneath um, Doc, I think. And then, you know, the move just right on top of the crease was amazing. Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, I know Kel got that one late, but uh, looking at your blue line today before the game, if you were going to predict one guy to have two goals, how far down the list would you have had Eric on that? Um, yeah, probably pretty far looking at those uh, guys that were playing tonight. Um, great first goal. I, I mean, it's one thing that we didn't do early enough in the game, and, and especially through the second period as we were passing up on – on shot opportunities uh, from good areas of the ice. And on the first one, he gets, you know, inside the dot and, and lets it go on a quick shot. And, I mean, they were coming out to the points pretty hard and denying passes and the ability to shoot it if you weren't shooting it right away. And it took us a little while to learn that. And, um, you know, so he gets that one. And then the, the second one has eyes, but it was obviously big goals when you're in a tight game like that and we get keep getting contributions from our back end and we know that all those guys can contribute in that way for us and um you know tonight it was just it wasn't a perfect game from us by any means but um guys dialed it up a little bit in the third period and I thought we had a pretty good period and to fight back after giving up the two penalty kill goals was big and our D were a big part of that. Kyle Fredrickson Denver Post. Darcy Kemper made some real big saves at the end of a couple periods tonight, uh, in addition to some others. Just what were your impressions of his play? Yeah, I liked him. I mean, I, I thought he was pretty good tonight. You know, like not a lot of work in the first period, does his job. Um, second period was his busiest for sure and, and didn't like some of the scoring chances we gave up, and he was good in that period. Um you know, I don't know that he had a great chance on the on on either of the power play goals that they got, and and like you said, he came up with some big saves for for us, and 
you know, kept the kept us with the lead and and then gave us a chance to sort of battle back in the third period and get an equalizer and the go ahead one in overtime. So I thought he was good. You know, I thought uh, Flurry was good for them as well. You know, uh, you know, Nate had a couple of real good shots and it, it, from some good scoring areas that he looked like he beat him on and he got got the crossbar and it's just kind of what's been going on for him here recently. Uh, just trying to encourage some of those guys to continue to shoot the puck. Because like I said, I think we passed up on some good scoring or, or good shooting opportunities with traffic in front at times during the game. And we were looking for the next best play and um, like to see our team shoot a few more of those. Jay Cohen, Associated Press. Hey, uh, Jared, I think you guys are up to, I want to say 32 goals from your defensemen. When you can get that kind of production from your blue line, how does that affect the rest of your game? Well, I mean, it helps, no question. I think that that's part of the way we want to play. It's so hard to create offense with just, you know, a line. You, you end up playing three versus five a lot. You need your knee to be part of it, whether it's the rush attack, whether it's ozone play. And we like to interchange our guys up there and, and, and let our D be part of it and use their skill. They're a talented group. They're an intelligent group. They all can shoot it. Um, you know, good vision and, and, and decision making, I think. So uh, we try to play them to their strengths and that's part of it. It's part of their DNA and part of what makes them successful and why we have them here. Um, you know, Joe's foresight to bring in guys like that that can help drive offense as well as defend. Uh, he's been doing it for years and getting us guys that can keep coming in and, and contribute in, in that way, both five on five and on the power play. So um I think we, we come to expect it now from our guys. There's a certain way that we want to play, and those guys all kind of fit into the, the system that we play and the way we want to go about our business on a daily basis. And to see them getting rewarded by scoring some goals for us is very, is very, very helpful. Hey, Chuck, do you think is that? It sounded like Jack Johnson was maybe going to return to the game, but then he didn't. Uh, what went on there? Yeah, so he came up with a lower body injury uh, during the first period, battled through the rest of the period, um, went in, got some work done in the intermission and thought he might be able to come out. And we tried it right before the period and uh, just wasn't feeling great for him. So we didn't want to take any risks there. Uh, I don't know the extent of the injury or, or you know, how, what kind of timeline he's going to be on. But uh, for tonight's game, we felt like it was the right thing to do. He wasn't feeling good, uh, feeling confident with it. And um, so, you know, we'll, we'll reevaluate again tomorrow and the next day and see if we can get him ready to go or if we're going to have to go to another option. Take three more here for Jared. Peter Ball, the athletic. Yeah, Jared, obviously Kale's offensive play gets a lot of praise and and stuff like that but where where do you think he's at as a defensive defenseman too at this point well he's been working on it and um i would say he's pretty good i mean his ability to play physical and, and skate and close plays out and then you know a, a big part of defending is not only being able to close plays out but being able to take the next step and grab the puck and, and advance it and get you moving in the right direction as a group of five. And we have a lot of guys that are really good at, and I think he's one of it. He's taken on a bigger, uh, bigger role in our penalty kill here, played a lot of penalty kill tonight. Um, it's just the way, you know, I think that the evolution of his game that he's going to, he's, he's got to be relied upon and for more than just uh, creating offense. And, and he understands that and he works hard at it and, you know, good players, talented players, smart players are going to find a way to be good at whatever you sort of assign them to do. And, and he's certainly a very coachable guy. So I think he's got room for improvement for sure. Um, but he is a, he is a good solid defender for us. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, obviously you guys had a little bit of personnel changes over the summer, but uh, what is it about the penalty kill that you think is just not working right now? Uh, I touched on this a little bit the other night. Um, doesn't seem like we're getting the timely saves when we need it. Um, it's not all goaltending. It, it, the, the mistakes are sort of rotating around in our group. There's no one specific thing that's been hurting us. You know, we talk about some things we don't like and some things we like, and 
we we fix some things and we stay with others that that have been working for us and um some of its reads and 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 being able to make the right read when there's a little bit of a breakdown we're not covering up mistakes very well um so you know we go portions of penalty kills where we're um near perfect in my opinion and then uh, we'll make a mistake and and uh, could be a similar play that's something that just happened and um, we get scored on we try to show them and learn from it and talk about it and get some feedback from our guys and then something else pops up so it's just been kind of moving around our penalty kill to different guys um, different mistakes and you know it's it's good it's been an area of our focus here recently because we've been on a little bit of a skid we had a good start to to the year and um it it concerns me a little bit but i also think that uh you go through um you know stages like that in, in all parts of your game and you just got to keep pushing it's not necessarily uh, what your penalty kill is like at game 29, that's that's a big concern. You want to make sure you're curing the problems and, and, and fixing things and finding solutions as, as you move on because it's going to have to be a big part of our game come uh, later on in the year here. So uh, we'll need it to help win us some hockey games. And last one here, Kyle Fredrickson, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, just uh, one last one on Kale's uh, game winner. You brought up uh, just the, really the deception on that play that, that he was able to, to trick that defender. Is, is that really what uh, separates him from the majority of, of his peers, his ability to do things like that? And, and is that more of a learned skill or, or in instinct in that situation? I think it's a little bit of both. I think you can teach deception in, in different areas. Like we, we Ray talks to our guys a lot, especially on the penalty kill about – um, being deceptive and, and showing one option uh, while another option is developing for you. But there's certainly, it, it's certainly skill-based as well. Like not every player can look at option one, um, decide that it's not your best option, go to option two, uh, make that play, or even look off that one and, and understand where option three is and, and, and be able to make the right decision at a pace that, that, that gets you. I mean, he's, he, he's looking up at, at other options with his eyes and then still knowing that he's setting himself up for a counter flow if, uh, if it doesn't work out. And we have a lot of players that can do that, but obviously he's one of the best in the league at it, especially on the blue line. All right. Thank you, Jared. All right. Thank you.